I wonder before we explore your composition modes from the, the Downs for the Sound Down songbook, I wonder if we could begin by talking a little bit about your musical background and your influences. I find that particularly interesting as from what I know of your work, you cross a number of different styles and genres. So uh, you know, what, what, how did you get into music as a young person or who or what influenced you? Well, that's... Um... There's a long answer to that, but um, I guess probably first and foremost, when I started having piano lessons, uh, and I was around six or seven years old, um, that's what kind of um, really sparked my interest in um, music and different types of music. And um, so I went along for piano lessons with my sister to see a lady called Mrs. Cohen. And and she really looked after us, looked after us really well. Um, so what what actually got me going even before that was, funnily enough, um, things like um, the TV series that they had uh, during that period in the early seventies, late sixties, early seventies, always had fascinating music, you know, accompanying the the drama, and also I was really into. Um, uh, like film um, soundtracks, and also oh, the, even the TV adverts had interest in, um, you know, music uh, that they use, you know, classical music as well as other musics. So those are the things that kind of sparked my interest, to be honest with you. And um, as I um, was finishing at um, primary infant school, um, an uncle of mine, um, Uncle John John, came over from uh, the Caribbean. My heritage is St. Vincent, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which is in the Caribbean. And um, he visited us. And when he came round, I, I noticed something sticking out the back of his bag. And it turned out that it was um, a bamboo flute, which he had made himself. And he started playing it. And, um, you know, I got all excited and uh, I had a go on it and found that I could um, play play a few tunes from it. So I knew that when I got to secondary school, um, I was going to turn my attention to a wind instrument, and the flute was what I um, um, turned to in the in the end. From as early as I can remember, when I was two or three, in the household, my, my parents were playing like um, a lot of um, soul music, um, reggae music, and um, R and B um hymns uh country and western so that was the type of music i was hearing at home uh alongside what i was hearing on the tv <laughs> so that's, that's a rich heritage and a rich number of musical styles and genres to, to tap into and, yeah. and how did you get get into composing i mean we, we, did, did you musically doodle you know from a for a long from an early age um I think what it is, is um, I managed to make quite good progress on the flute. Like after a year, I was able to um, play through quite, quite a few um, different musics. And we had a really good um, head of music for the first two years <clears throat> before he left. And what, what he would do is, um, depending on the instrumentation that was available, um, he would arrange um, uh, well-known pieces of music but um from different genres and um that would you know accommodate um the the ensemble so for instance he had arranged music by Bert Bacharach and Herb Albert um and also Scott Joplin um and then you know Mozart and Bach also um from different musicals uh that you'd hear in the West End and um different songs from Motown. So it was quite an eclectic range of different musics um, that we would get. So that then, you know, got me further interested in these other forms of music as well, because we, we were playing the music firsthand among us and, um, you know, performing it to um, the other kids in the school during assembly and stuff like that. So um, that kind of seeing how he did the arrangements and that sort of it kind of got me a bit interested in in wanting to to arrange so 
what happened was by the time I was about 14, I'd been playing about a year and a half or two years. And um, I managed to um, uh, get into the Center for Young Musicians, which was a Saturday day school. Uh, at the time, it was at Pimlico School. And, you know, lessons right across the range. We, we were given so much different tuition. It was, it was really rich in um, enlightening us uh, further in music. So we would have like history and music, um, there'd be choir, um, read, you know, piano lessons. There were various different ensembles, wind quintets and um, wind band. Um, so w we did the oral, you know, read oral lessons and and and, and theory. And during, but it was general musicianship classes that actually that's where I started um, experimenting and and putting pen to paper, uh, trying to sketch uh, bits of music here and there so it developed and we had really they were really good teachers there they, they kind of um switched between two different teachers who um imparted the the knowledge for us so um i picked up a lot from that and so but other than that you know i didn't go all out and have um you know lessons in composition um i just i wanted to just go my own way if you like and and just make my own discoveries and and um and just keep carrying on from there so in some ways you could say i'm self-taught but in other ways i, I say i gained a lot from the general musicianship classes uh, and then later on at, at, at guildhall also guildhall school of music and drama which is where i um also studied so um, what kinds of music would you normally write? I mean, is this this piece you've written for the, the Southdown Songbook, is that typical of your pieces or, or not? In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Um, I sort of went down a slightly different path in, in that I kind of um, journeyed through different realms, if you like. And um, for instance, the for the opening, um, you know, I had a conversation with Ed, Ed Hughes about this a while back, and it kind of set the scenery in my head as to um, what sort of elements I wanted to include. And um, so, you know, when when I sort of looked at different poems um i selected one which stood out to me and which was uh, really evocative and um and I'm, I'm someone who enjoys going for walks especially since um the lockdowns started and you know with this pandemic so um i i, I got a feel for you know being out in the open and in the fields and um as if I were walking through the through the downs, and um, what came at me, funny enough, was um, a lot of the wind band music that I was playing, like the symphonic wind bands. I did a, I, I was playing in about three different ones when I was a teenager, um, before I started playing in the London School Symphony Orchestra, and and they were brilliant um, because a lot of the time we'd be playing folk music, like um, which was written by Vaughan Williams Holst um percy granger for instance and so that's what was coming at me i was i was getting echoes of those kind of musics um that i, I enjoyed playing back then so the uh, um, the opening part of the the work sort of has echoes of those sounds that, that i was feeling and hearing um when we played those musics and so it's quite um folk like it's kind of like classical folk um uh, music um slightly pastoral uh, idyllic scenery and um and then i uh, i allowed that to kind of um open up and settle and eventually um gradually moved towards um uh, the jazz realm so um but is it you know, there's a kind of like a, a natural transition uh, as that takes place, as it unfolds. So, um, I, for instance, I open with basically the wind wind instruments with the cello, and then um, eventually I, I draw in like the uh, organ 
and um, guitar. Um, and because um, the poem I chose is, 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 is from the 18th century, so I wanted to have echoes of like early music, if you like, um, in there. So hence the way I've written for the guitar. Um, it is, um, uh, has a flowing line, which is quite lute-like, if you could say, and, um, and kind of like um, gives sort of echoes of um, courtly dances, if you like. And, um, and as that grows, um, we kind of fade away um, f from that scenery and enter into a slightly more um, intense zone, um, more evocative and more um, feelings of a, well, nocturnal kind of like mode. And, um, and that's where the, the jazz um, kind of kicks in. But there's hybrids, um, forms that's also um, intertwined, like there's a bit of, um, if you like, Cuban salsa uh, rhythms, and um, but the backbone is actually um, uh, the, the feeling of um, a hip hop beat, and um, and uh, we have a, a vocalist who I'm aware um, is very versatile, uh, and so. Um, it's it's the 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 vocal line is, is 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 as you'd hear a jazz singer sing if you like so there's, there's that sort of blend going on uh, through through that section thank you so so we might return to one or two of those things perhaps if we can a, bit, a little bit later yeah um, i'm interested in whether you often do find um a stimulus for your composition and for your ideas from poems or you know from walking or is it you know, is this typical of of uh, of a stimulus for, for your your own compositions or does it vary you have you know different stimuli well um it's interesting you should ask me that because uh, um this this is definitely different because most of the most of my compositions they're instrumental they, they, they don't have um lyrics and, and vocals so um that's why i was you know quite you know excited that's why i was excited uh, to be able to do this because i was going to it's going to involve vocals and um and i was going to set music to to a poem so those two things in itself um really excited me and so it's a different zone for me uh, to to enter into thank you so one of the things that, that young composers, I think, struggle with is often getting started. You know that they're not quite sure how to come up with that that motif or that original idea or, or to just get them going. Um, and and I, I talk about it, you know it's just getting stuck if you really. And, and how how do you get unstuck? Do you have that, or is, does it just flow beautifully? That the musical muse comes upon you and that's it, you're away. Or, or, do you have difficulties with ideas too? It, it depends what I'm writing. It depends. Um, it depends what I'm writing for. It depends on the situation. Once, um, once I got a strong feeling for like um, folk music, English folk music, um, that kind of sparked things off, and um, and then the notes started to flow from the um, first few strains of a imagined um, a folk song in my head so it, it just it just all all depends it depends on um what you're trying to depict and um what the mood is and what the um uh, what the feelings are so and you tap into that and um you just try and uh, replicate that um through the notes and through the music so um you have to use your imagination sure and um i do tend to hear echoes of things as well in my head um which help me to to shape and fashion them um and like i said with when we when this piece enters into um the jazz realm um 
I wanted to make it really not nocturnal and and the the poem is is, is very descriptive and it, it mentions like the nightjar which is a nocturnal bird if you like um kind of similar to an owl i guess and it's and it shriek and it's you know and then also the the chilly sort of breeze you know of the night and um the withered look of the plants and <laughs> trees you know so all these things are sort of coming through so i I um, take that on board and, and try and evoke that kind of um, atmosphere. What I did was I, I, I wrote down at the top of the score, the first line of the poem, yeah. the dark and pillowy cloud, the sallow trees. And so that was my tone <laughs> for the opening section, uh, the opening part of the piece, which is about two and a half minutes long, I guess. So the poem, two minutes long. yeah, so the poem really set the context but for definitely the, yeah yeah definitely even before the vocalist enters with the lyrics you know i re already had, had the the setting of the poem in mind right at the opening even though it's just going to be instrumental so i wanted to evoke that mood and that feeling first of all lay that foundation before bringing the actual poem in thank you so how important is structure or shape to you and this piece? And you know, could you give us a bit of an outline on that? And, and, and also, so when do you think about structure? Is it before you have your key ideas or as it develops or after you've got the key ideas? Or is, you know, is it sort of a bit more organic, it just, just happens? What, what's your view on structure? You know, it, it's funny, you mentioned all those things. And to be honest with you, it's a bit of everything. I, w I wouldn't say it was one particular specific thing. I mean, as I mentioned before, I knew the type of elements I wanted to include in it. I already had a, I had an idea that it probably w would go towards a folk um, type of setting. Um, and it was going to be on a kind of more classical basis. But once having entered into start, you know, writing the piece and that, the early music sort of idea then started to grow in amongst that. So that was something that was a bit more new. That was, that was a bit more closer to when I started writing. And um, so that's the organic part, <laughs> I guess, when um, I was starting to, to, you know, hear ripples of um, early music. And um, I, I, I had an idea that when the lyrics came in um um i wanted to juxtapose things with now and then <laughs> so um I, and i was feeling a sense of like hip-hop uh music more for the um kind of the beats i guess as the backbone um but as i was writing and i was um sort of drawing into that I was then feeling this pulsation, um, which was sort of like aligning things towards a, a kind of like a Cuban salsa rhythm. So there's a clave there that is um, sort of like um, which you would hear in um, Cuban music. And uh, and so um, I incorporated that <laughs> on the backbone of the hip hop beat. And um, and then um, I used um, in the harmony wise, I kind of like used jazz chords. And um, so all these things are mixed in and the, the vocals is, is of a sort of like, um, it's like a jazz like vocal, if you like. Not strictly speaking, but you know, it has that kind of like feel to it. And, um, and I also, another element was I knew that at some point I also wanted to go into a sort of a narration moment. So it wasn't all just going to be sung. There will, there will be a sort of a, 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 a narrated um, section where it would be a bit freer also. Um, and so uh, I was getting on with that and and it was, there's some free elements there. Um, and then, um, and then it, it sort of dawned on me, it's going to make sense for this to go full circle. And so um, it goes back to how it opened. And often when I go on walks, 
I always return to the spot where I started. <laughs> so um, it all just made sense in the end. And, and so, um, so that's what I mean. I had the elements there, then they solidify once I start, but then organically other things start creeping in as it develops. Thank you, that's really helpful. Uh, and, and it's really interesting to see how different composers you know, use structures in different ways. Uh, yeah. so that's great. I'm interested now in, in exploring a little bit about how you might have used technology in, in writing your piece and, uh, and whether also you, you might have some tips or ways of working that might help younger composers as they compose with technology. But could you talk to us a little bit about you know, what, what you've <laughs> used? And, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll be very honest with you. Since I started composing, um, like professionally, you know, receiving commissions and being paid for it, um, I actually compose um, using the flute first and foremost. <laughs> and um, and as I'm creating the, the the themes and the melody and so that that does tend to come to me first. Uh, alternatively, sometimes the low end comes to me first, the, the, like the the bass or the you know the cello and, and the um, the bass like feel. So um, and then the harmonies. So for for the harmonies, I just arpeggiate through um, the chords and hear the harmonies in my head. And um, so I start off that way. I'm just I'm just hearing the music in my mind, using the flute just to correct a few things or whatever, and uh, or really establish some of the lines. And, um, and then arpeggiating through some chords just to see where I'm going with the harmonies and that. Um, and it's again, it depends what the music is. It depends what the music's for. If it's like for my jazz bands, for instance, then um, that's usually all it takes. I, ju I just hear the music in my head and I use the flute just to, you know, just to clarify some of the lines and things like that. So you haven't mentioned their manuscript paper or, <laughs> or Sibelius. So I'm yeah. <laughs> you're not sitting in front of a computer screen and or, or, or yeah. and, and writing this down. It's yeah. down inside your head. Okay. No, I'm, I'm actually old school. So yeah, I do um put pencil to paper and okay. use manuscript yeah. while i'm but it's it's kind of like sketches you know to start with and then it um then i bulk it out but um so yeah i am i am, I am uh writing it down um but um if something's got a groove to it and if something's got a lot of different harmonies to it then i i, I like to hear it better so then I might go to Logic or, or GarageBand so that I can put all the layers down and then hear them as one. You know, obviously you get used to the, the MIDI sound. <laughs> but at least you can get a representation of the different instruments and um, and then hear them in, you know, in combination. Thank you, yeah. So, um... What do you think is the most accessible way into your piece for a young composer? Where, where should they? I mean, you can say start start at the beginning, but you know, is is there, a, there is, is there something that you think they might gravitate to 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 looking at in a bit more detail before others? I, I think just listening from the beginning and hearing the transitions, if you like, because mm -hmm. it, it clearly goes from mode to mode. Which yeah. is partly why I've called it modes from the downs, <laughs> and so um, as well as you know, I use sort of like a lot of scales you find in jazz, which are jazz jazz modal modal scales. Yeah. So um, there's a play on the word modes there, you know, the, the mode of the the poem, you know, <laughs> the, yeah. the different moods, and um, so yeah, I, I would I would just go through. It's, it's written in a way that it, it goes from start to finish is a, is a, is a journey. And so, um, but it, 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 they might find, might, might, what one thing they in particular they might find interesting is how it transitions 
into the different zones um and it's it's all segued so um it, it could be interesting to, for them to see how it travels into these different different zones um but yeah there might be certain because it, it's very groove orientated once the vocals comes in so they they may gravitate towards that now interestingly and your vocal comes in to just after the middle of the piece um which for most songs it would come in much earlier. So, what? Why did you decide to to place it there? Was it well, was better sort of setting the mood beforehand? And, and yeah, and and the thing is, is um, it's, it's just being mindful that you know the the South Downs, it's really expansive land. It's like it's huge, you, you know, and, and it's con contrasting. So. Um, so that's why I wanted to lay the foundation, establish that sense of um, expansiveness and 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 the uh, you know the scenery and the the feeling you get when you're out in the, in, the, in those kind of open spaces um, and the sense of you know walking um, across the land. So um, there's a lot to take in. So it's setting the scenery first, really. And the, and the tone of everything um and also to for it to make more of an impact when when the vocalist comes in you know the vocalist kind of eases in it's not like bam <laughs> you know there's a it kind of just you know melds into the um, texture and everything uh, before um uh, she gets going so um yeah, that that's the reason why it's it's placed there. Yeah. And is there a particular technique you use in your piece, you know, perhaps for a specific instrument that might benefit from an explanation to to um, young people? Um, um, there might be, but if there is. Yeah. Um, I've got some kind of like bends, note bends, and sort of glissando, if you like, um, in the vocals um which is sort of kind of like befitting um towards this kind of like jazz phrasing so there's elements of that there's another part where um for instance on on the flute um there's an evocative moment in in the words and um the vocalist sustains on a high note and i get the flute to radiate these harmonics um but within a tremolo and overblowing so it's a it's quite a haunting blend when you hear it those two things in um, together um so i've got um yeah overblowing harmonics while playing um uh, a tremolo and um on the i've also got another moment where um the the Flautists and clarinetists play um, like color trills, if you like, or timbral trills. Uh, Are you able to give us an example? Oh yes, um, that would really help so that uh, yeah, people know so, what what those are. Okay, so this is my flute, <laughs> and um, I'm going to play that tremolo effect that I mentioned. Oops, excuse me. And um, so what I'm going to do is. In the bottom register of the flute, I'm going to tremolo between the low E flat and the A flat. I'm going to gradually overblow. So um, I'm going to in increase the, sp the speed gradually, but quite rapidly, until I reach um, the harmonic for um, top of E flat, which is on a third leisure line above the stave. <laughs> So like that, that kind of effect. And also um, there's um, like uh, color trills, if you like. And um, I'm doing this on an E flat again. Uh, in certain places and the um, clarinet is doing something um, similar. Um, 
Thank you. That's really helpful. Yeah, there's some flutter tongues as well, also, which is like. Um... <laughs> Uh, roll the tongue. I'm also particularly interested if there's there's an idea that you developed because I think one of the other things that that young composers really struggle with or can struggle with is they've got their initial idea or ideas. How do they develop those through the piece uh, and expand on them? So if there's any examples of that, it would be really helpful if you could say anything about that or demonstrate it. Yeah. Okay. Then. Um, so I'm going to play um, the opening. So this is in GarageBand, yeah. Yeah, and I'm using um, GarageBand um, rather than Logic. If if the music isn't too elaborate, or whatever, and uh, like I said, I wanted to keep this more pure and, and simple um, because that's how I felt the the, the kind of folk element. So um, I decided to use GarageBand, which is it's easier to set up and and progress things. So. Um, now this is a so the thing is to to have a main theme add a main sort of like instrumental theme if you like and um and i deliberately placed um several like cadences if you like where, where it kind of like pauses each time and then it goes into a slightly different idea but what what i actually did was that main first theme i just kind of like did a variation on it and did like complement complementary like um, uh, melodic I ideas um, that's bounced off from that main first idea. So um, I'll just play the first um, idea for you. You should be able to hear it in a moment. Okay, so that's a, basically the first main theme. Mm -hmm. So then um, a little moment after that, it's like a variation on that. The, the next um, uh, theme. So it's kind of part and parcel of the first main theme, but you just do a slight variation. Well, here's the next. And then repeated notes. Echo in some of the phrases. Another cadence. Lots of echoing of phrases, and um, so it's like just slight like variations on the main theme, and then um, it, um, where I really um, bring out the imitation slightly later. It's um, on the next line, which is sort of like in jazz terms, what you've heard just now would be the A section, and what you're about to hear would be the B section. Um, I'm not sure if I've got it in the right place. Okay, so this section would be the B section. And I've got the echo in of the first line phrase. Okay, so I'm... I'm I'm taking everything from that first main thing that I laid down. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, I give the clarinet, um, I give the clarinet the, the, the main theme. So the clarinet takes over. And this is like the, um, the final free um, theme that, um, that, I've, uh, that I establish. And, um, and let's see where are we so the next theme is is coming up now which i'll give to the clarinet and then 
the loot moment. So, um, that's how it developed, you know, the ideas. I mean, some of them, I'm, I keep saying themes, themes, themes. I mean, really, it's, it's a different phrase. Yeah. But there are particular moments where it's a different theme. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's, it's all born out of that first cell, <laughs> yeah. if you like. And the other challenges for, for, I think, young composers is how to finish their piece. But, I mean, basically, um, with this particular piece, I um, I'd gone through most of the elements, um, but about halfway through, it, it just dawned to me that this is this is probably going to go full circle. <laughs> you know, I've been walking uh, across the, the downs and taking in um, this, the the um, all these different moments in in the poem, and um, find myself sort of returning back to where I started. So I basically um, end uh, the same way as I opened, and it was very. It felt just very, you know, fitting uh, yeah. for that to happen. It felt like a natural, um, you know, course. So. Um, in the instance of this that's that's how that worked out and um i think i mentioned earlier to you that whenever i go on walks um at the end of the walk i've always returned back to the spot where i started so um yeah that's that's one way you you could finish also another way um some people it happens a lot in music especially classical music where you sort of um might do a music m musical sort of um um what's the word i'm looking for sort of summation if you like of what's gone before and so um you you're kind of like uh writing um towards the end of the music a, sum a summation of what we've we've gone through and um and end on that that note so you bring in like you might bring in fragments of what's been, what was there earlier a bit like but a recapitulation yeah exactly but you you round it off yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know you, you you round it off and yeah. um so um yeah i've done that sometimes and sometimes you want to um create a feeling that um it's never ending and it just goes out into the ether and so you don't give it a sort of finality, you know, you don't, you know, have a loud final chord or anything like that. You might just let it hang and drift yeah. into the ether. So um, it, it all it depends on um, um, the context and everything and and the story. So I've just really got one more question, really. Yeah. And I'm, it, it's something that we sort of, call a, a composer toolbox ah uh, yeah and you know, do you have default things that you return to perhaps when you might be you know stuck or thinking hey, what, what do i do here things that you know that work whether they're structural things melodic rhythmic or harmonic devices you know, do, and do you have any advice for a young composer as to what to put or to consider in their own sort of little toolbox so my first um when I started band leading, my first main band was heavily influenced by Brazilian music. So there'd be lots of different types of samba music in there. And it's music I compose, music I arranged, you know. So um, I did specific things with different bands. Um, another band, we focused a lot on music from the Caribbean, especially Jamaica, you know, a lot of reggae type music, um, dub as well, and dancehall. So um, that was the focus there. And then there's a, there was another band where we, we um, wanted to play um, uh, acoustically um, different types of dance music, which included um, UK Garage and drum and bass and um, a bit of house, soulful house. So um, 
they were different specific things at um, different times. And so, because that's all worked into me, and that when it comes to writing for an ensemble and that, those things can come to me at any point, <laughs> you know, uh, as well as the more kind of like modern jazz, you know, sort of setting. So, and then, you know, the involvement in um, uh, non-Western music, like mu music from different parts of Africa, for instance. Sometimes uh, I have moments of, of, of um, uh, of say uh, music from um, the Gambia, if you like, or, or um, um, Senegal, mm. um, reaching me um, music that you often hear griots playing, who, who play the chora. So um, you know, I've had moments where those kind of music seep in to what I'm writing. So um, it's maybe i'm quite lucky i don't have to tr tr try too hard or think too hard because of those experiences different experiences they um uh, they just it's like something um emerging you know <laughs> or someone raising their head you know yeah. and, and waving <laughs> yeah. include me <laughs> yeah. so um yeah uh, um yeah I, I find that one a bit bit hard to be um specific but I, I i would say don't be afraid to take risks though don't be too careful with the music and try and be too precise with it sometimes you just muck your way through it and then you can tidy it up a bit afterwards but the main thing is just laying down the ideas even if it doesn't seem to make sense at first just get the ideas down commit commit the ideas first and then you can remold it or refashion it afterwards so sometimes if you if you think too hard or you think it through too hard or, or or try too hard that can create a block that can create a blockage you you got to open up the channels and let the energy flow um without inhibiting it in in any way that's really helpful thank you is there anything you'd like to say about your piece that i may have missed or that you think might be important for young composers to hear about I think um, a th well, a few things I would say is important is is listening to the way the instruments blend, the way they feed off of each other. So both with what's written and both with what you hear orally, you know, sonically. Uh, see, listen out for how they they blend because that's something I went for. You know how I blend the instruments together and try and hear how they complement each other and also get a sense of the balance between the instruments because it's it's important to try and balance your instruments well so that um certain main lines come through well enough um if there's a counter melody you, you still want to be able to hear that quite well also but notice how everything is balanced balanced out and also the different types of sounds used um and get a feel for um you see there's certain parts of the music where i've used um i've actually used um jazz chord symbols and so um and those moments like it's particularly for um, the keyboardist and the guitarist so they will actually have that extra freedom to 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 maybe vary um, what they're playing so they could use different inversions in the chords if you like they can also add fills to what they're playing so it doesn't have to be too concrete their parts so you know listen out for those things see see how they sort of um extemporize on 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 on, on their lines um and listen to the rhythmic you know i've found that a lot of people don't pay enough attention to rhythm in their music so um notice the way of use um you know my use of rhythm in this piece because in the opening section to the second section there's a huge contrast to to how i use um, um the, the the rhythmic side of things so um <clears throat> those are just something and yeah listen for the words and and see how the the music and the lines react um to the words and how they 
complement the words and and how um, they support uh, the vocal lines. Uh, that's probably worth um, listening out for uh, also. Thank you, Roland, for your time, um, for giving us such a lot to think about. So many helpful insights there into your piece and, and the way you work as a composer, which is, is really useful. Really appreciate it. Thank oh, you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Duncan. I enjoyed it. <laughs>